This is Stephanie, and this is the Mocha Minutes Podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to let you know about something that's a little new here at the Mocha Minutes Podcast. We are now participating in Buy Me a Coffee. So if you haven't heard, buymeacoffee.com is a place where you can show some um, support and some love monetarily to some of your favorite content creators. That includes me. <laughs> um, so it's in the increments of either a dollar, three dollars or five dollars. And you can do as many as you would like. Um so I just wanted to let you guys know would love, love, love some support. So if you would go to buymeacoffee.com backslash mocha minutes, I would greatly appreciate it. It will also be in the show notes. Okay, here we go. Cause my heart starts beating triple time with thoughts of loving you on my mind. I can't figure out just what to do when the cause and cure is you. I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak. I lose all control and something takes over me. In a days, your love so amazing, it's not a face. I want you to stay with me by my side, I swallow my pride, your love is so sweet. It knocks me right off of my feet. Can't explain why your love makes me weak. Hello, welcome to the Mocha Minutes Podcast. I am Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you are a Bravo watcher and you watch SWV and Escape, you would know why that song should have been the closing of that concert. I don't care what candy mama sugar mama birds tucker says okay i don't care what cliff's wife say okay that should have closed out that daggone concert i don't care three million just for that single get out of my face y'all have no idea the chokehold that week has had on me because i am someone i was born 1981 so i'm as old as mtv i grew up on that song do I know all the words to understanding? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Week is literally top tier R&B slow jam. It should have closed out a concert. Don't care what y'all say. But that's not why I'm here today. That's not That's not why I'm here. I'm not going to, we're not going to do Esther B versus um, an escape. I did that with Cook and with Taria. By the way, now I'm saying this out loud, might have to revisit this just to talk about the show. Okay. Y'all playing in my face when it comes. You playing in my face. You playing in Coco Gamble's face. You talking to, you are playing in Taj George, wife of Eddie George's face. Y'all definitely playing in Lily's face. I'm tired of y'all. Anyway, that, again, that's not why I'm here. I am joined by my buddy, one of the best voices in podcastdom. I'm here with Mr. Cole Johnson, aka the host of Cold Sports. See, I can't do it as well as you can. <laughs> it is amazing. Cole, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, 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 what, uh, it's good, good to see you, Ste- here to see you Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> did you just move Coco from the mic? Uh, <laughs> I, I heard SWV. I was, I was going way back in 1993. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, man, I've heard that song in years. I'm just I'm just saying. <sighs> I, so the show on Bravo, when they were doing the show and they were talking about shows that, like songs to end the um, concert because it was like a dual SRV escape. Mm-hmm. For some odd reason, that's, of course, escape was like, girl, it should start with we should end the show with understanding. And it's like when week is in the arsenal. uh, uh-uh. And then they were just like, you know what? Let's just get this show done because it was up in Canada and Ontario. I think this was back in September, October. And so they just, you know, compromised and, re- and, you know, relented. And I'm sitting here listening to this song and then seeing how they performed it. I'm like, y'all could have just cut this right here. Okay. Y'all could have just cut this and stopped with Week. I said, yeah. Week is one of those songs where I'm just like, y'all have no idea. It is timeless. There's some, you know, because Cole is like, you're an R&B um, listener. There's some mm-hmm. songs that have not aged well. No. 
Most of it is oh. in Robert's um, catalog, but that's neither here nor there. But it's a lot of songs that have not aged well. When you listen to it, you're like, girl, what is this song? No, it is funny you mentioned Robert's catalog and age. <laughs> not on purpose, y'all. This is not <laughs> on purpose. Because, <laughs> I mean, his catalog is of age. It, yeah, as it, opposed it, to the muses for his catalog. Well, okay. Right, exactly. But uh, but I but I'm one hundred percent in agreement with you. One of my favorite songs, period, of any genre, definitely an R and B. It's not mm-hmm. even question R and B, but of any genre, one of my favorite songs is "Weak." And uh, yeah, if uh, <laughs> if you're putting forth any 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 <laughs> group together, any any uh, this- any concert lineup, mm-hmm. uh, yes. Uh, and if you'd say, okay, what song is going to be last most times, week mm-hmm. would be that song. I'm just saying, hello, we got Jodeci, which, girl, what? Um, going on tour. <laughs> I think Drew Hill, this is some happening this time this summer. I have a lot of questions about the Jodeci of it all, because I'm like, wait, so you mean Devontae Swing is going back on tour? Wait, girl, wait, hold on. What? Why is Devontae swing more. back on tour? I, I, you know what? Nope. Let me just be quiet. Um, I refuse to say anything on the terms that it may incriminate me. Sorry, oh, y'all need to look up this video, I'm Casey. When I tell you, it'll sizzle in your spirit and make Don't you laugh because he was like, self. "What you're not going to do is get me to say anything." No, to some <laughs> Devonte swing. Is a thirst trap for Stephanie. Got you. Okay. <clears throat> it was like that whole when um so T Boz from TLC was mm-hmm. with Dalvin. And so right. I was like, girl, him, Mac 10. I'm like, you know what, T Boz, I love you, but I we need to have a family meeting at Tamika Scott's house about your oh, taste of me. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, her we can't, house though. <laughs> but well, I mean, she can't solve no, you know. You know, in the Scott house or Scott um, hyphen Bivens homes, they can't. I'm telling you, this as we be escape show is just like, girl, what the world is this? But they can't solve any problems within their family. But maybe other people's families can get. You know, Jesus can fix it. <laughs> oh no! So, <laughs> so you figured they could help other people's Me, problems look, better yeah, than their it's own. It's like I feel like this. I was like watching this show. I'm like, everybody's like, you need to get a yawn on. Like y'all really do. So she can go. You know what? I'm gonna throw all this stuff off the table. I'm like, yeah, because me and her will go arm in arm and go weep in the bush. We're going to go in the bush and weep. Because oh. Yala might dust her platform off and do it. You never know. I mean, I mean, she did find numbers to actual life coaches and psychologists. So you know what? We might be able to do this. <laughs> might be able to do this. Um, so, Cole, how have you been doing? I mean, the sports world is heating back up. So, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I will. But personally i'm doing well can't really complain about that uh mm. in 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 yeah in terms of uh all things sports uh yeah it's almost a it's almost a question of where you want to start or where or, uh, or what do you want to focus on because there's so many things that are so, going on so um so add this person to your thirst trap list so the general manager of the san francisco giants I think he's everybody, so it's like everybody likes him. So that's Mr. Gabe Kapler, mm-hmm. who has this voice where it's like, sir, shut up. <laughs> I will get on a flight. I will risk those. You will co- risk <sighs> you risk it all and go cross country to see. I him. would go okay. risk it all on Frontier Airlines for this man. <laughs> I'm like, he is a little too fine. He got a little bit too many roses. And then he bringing up how his very Jewish parents were bringing their white asses down to listen to Martin Luther King Jr. You know what? You can be quiet, sir. Oh my you can be quiet. Be quiet. He's like, yeah, because these clubs are run by all these white men. I'm like, okay, shut up. <laughs> be quiet. He's like, I refuse to stand for the anthem because kids, like, we have no, like, real plan for gun control. Yeah, because if you close your eyes, anybody, literally, he was saying some of the most similar things to Colin Kaepernick. And mind you, baseball is so conservative. They were kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah, he needs to be fired. Does he go? Yeah. <laughs> of all, yeah, of all the sports, baseball is the mo- hands down the most conservative of all the it's professional like, sports. And they're just like, yeah, I'm like, we, look at here, Gabriel, we don't need your hippy dippy BS here. It's like. <laughs> hippy dippy. 
Oh my gosh. See, now I'm learning. Now I've known you now seven years. I did not know that you were into baseball like that. I'm, I'm kind of not. I'm just aiming the game a couple of bucks. <laughs> But the thing about it is, I will say, going to see a baseball game is top tier fun. Mm -hmm. Watching it, it on, the, it on the television is like, girl, can I go down there? Can we go? Can we laugh? Can I laugh of my neighbors to the left um, and laugh at them because they're very drunk? They are white boy wasted, and so um, it's going to be funny. So I think this is a memory with my dad. Um, mm -hmm. So at a previous um, employer, I got tickets to go to an Orioles game. Camping Yards is one of the most beautiful parks ever. It's like, it literally is a yeah. park as opposed to just a baseball field. Yeah, It, it was is. fun to watch and also see how excited he was to watch the game. Because I think there's this real big, and I don't understand that, where they think Black people don't like baseball. I'm like, I don't know too many Black people who don't like baseball, actually. Right. We, like, black people love baseball, and he was very excited to watch. And it's one of my fun memories of him is going to a baseball game because he that's the thing he likes baseball he like he was a huge football fan um and gosh i would have loved to know what he thinks about this odell beckham news because he probably would be kind of 50 50 on it um but yeah black mm. people in baseball i'm not sure why people think that black people don't like baseball that it, it, it okay so <clears throat> I'm, I'm i'm glad that you're in the neighborhood of of, of my age what neighborhood? Uh, <laughs> i mean i grew up with my father teaching me baseball before anything else i mean he was a huge boxing fan and he of course he, Dad, that's the other one yeah yeah and then, of course he taught me a whole ton of things about boxing mm -hmm. and and well of course i grew up in houston so you know houston Texas yeah. Yeah. football is everywhere and it's pervasive. Football is life. Yes, it yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, to give you an understanding at the moment, there is a stadium, there's a high school stadium that mm -hmm. people funded 70 million dollars to build. So, if you want to know how big football Your is in crowd Texas, funded there you go. Seven, 70 million dollars. 7 seven zero, 70 million dollars for a high school stadium. Yes. Oh that is how God. big time Texas football is. So I grew up there. So, of course, football, you know, father, you know, taught me that, too. Mm. And of course, we both grew up, you know, learning about basketball and learning to yeah. like it. Yeah. But baseball was the first love for him. Mm. And it was for me. And and, you know, and, and I, you know, I grew up and I saw nothing but black people embrace seen exactly. baseball exactly thank you yeah thank so, you for making me feel seen because i'm like cole i'm like because we are in the same neighborhood i'm like yeah why person black people don't like baseball yeah it's so to me it doesn't make sense i'm like i grew up i mean the the first thing that my father threw at me was a baseball mm -hmm. it wasn't a football mm -hmm. it wasn't a basketball it was a baseball correct and right. and and we would and we would play it in you know, the two of us tossing the ball around mm -hmm. for at least uh from the time I was four, uh like 10, 11, 12 years mm -hmm. of my of my childhood. So yeah, ba baseball is such a huge first love for me that mm. I, I I look at today and people saying, Well, black people don't really want to talk about baseball, they don't really know no baseball. I'm like, are you kidding me? Correct. No, <laughs> I don't. I'm no dual made to me. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, a, and y'all, and I'm just using this as an excuse to say, Cap Kappa is extremely attractive. And they were like, where, where are all the black baseball players? I'm like, so we could have this conversation about Afro Latinos, but no, mm -hmm. that's not. This is not the podcast for that. We we could talk about it. It's like, wait, there are no black people. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of Afro Latinos who do not claim to be Afro. -Latinos. They don't claim to be black. They don't, they don't being black so we could have that and then we can also talk about the cost of like literally getting to baseball because it's not like you know the draft for the nfl is coming up in the, mm -hmm. i guess a few weeks it's not the same draft it is in baseball like you have to no, have a whole bunch of money mm -hmm. baseball and hockey you're like where are all the yeah. black people um yeah they gotta like they have to work a little bit harder to get into these sports and what and and it's that's a great point you brought up. It it costs a lot of money to get a a, a 
a boy or girl started Mm -hmm. into just even practicing or being on a team. And then if that person has the skills, Mm -hmm. then they get drafted once they're 18 into the minor leagues. And let's be completely honest. If you're 17, 18, you, you grow up in inner city. Mm -hmm. Uh, you weigh all your options and you say to yourself, okay, so I can earn nine figures a year at 18 versus if I, if I play basketball versus if I would be in baseball, yes, the money is longer, but Mm -hmm. man, the road to get there, I might actually not even see the majors for two, three, maybe four years. And you got to be okay with that. Yes, and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. And not only you have to be okay with that, all the way to AAA, you might not get but maybe five figures. You might yeah. not see $100,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, could you imagine like maybe like a Patrick Mahomes or a Russell Wilson right. in, ba- in baseball? The thing yeah. about this is like, I think Patrick would probably be able to do it because it's that. But oh, I yeah, think yeah, it's very interesting picture, yeah. that he literally still went to football anyway. And mm-hmm. he probably would be in a better situation where he actually could have played baseball. Russell, I'm not. He probably. I'm, I'm not too sure. It's like if he had to, like because he played it in college. It's like mm-hmm. yeah, because when I went to college, I knew a few black baseball players, mm-hmm. but they also were kind of like, I don't know how far I'm going to be able to go. I might have to change sports, or I may mm-hmm. have to just do something completely different. Right bow out of sports altogether exactly right so it's kind of like it's, it's expensive because it's not like the draft or like you know right before the draft in between the combine and the draft where people are visiting schools that's for football mm-hmm. they and basketball right. they can do that for baseball you gotta pay to come see them right i'm gonna be here on this date and if you're mm-hmm. not here i'm not gonna see you and my schedule will not be open it's like yeah what mm-hmm. it's not the same and it's like no. there are so many talented kids that don't get in Mm Because even with the NFL draft, it's like, yeah, y'all can crunch the numbers on this. It's 32 teams. Right. It's like, yeah, it's hundreds of thousands of kids. Like, the higher you get, closer you get to actual making this career, it's a lot less people. Mm -hmm. And most of the people in the NFL, they were stars in high school. I don't think you're going to find anybody who wasn't really a star. Right. Everybody's not Tom Brady. Getting drafted the last round into becoming, like, Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, but he still had to get there. Anybody who even gets drafted, mm-hmm. I don't care what round you're getting into, you have a lot of talent. Yeah. And there's some that are undrafted. So, and they big really mm-hmm. talented. So it's like, if I wanted to do the history, which I can, I, I know do, you could. I, right. It's like, I could do the search because I mean, you can look at it. I'm like, we can do mm-hmm. like the PWI versus HBCU, which, oh, gosh, by yeah. the way, p- put that on your thing because I would love to have this conversation because I went to a PWI. I was oh, not like, okay. yeah, because Towson. That would be interesting. Yeah, Towson is a PWI, but it's like right. we were not like D1, NCAA, anything like that. That was not us. Yeah. I was about to say, that's a, yeah, I was going to say, and I say with yours, that's a different level of, it, of PWI too. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a huge um, lacrosse in baseball school. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah, you're in a, you're in, yeah, you're in lacrosse. Yeah, it country. was kind of like yeah. lacrosse, like, lo- like I didn't realize lacrosse was such a big thing until I got into college because when I was in high school, there weren't a lot of look la- like or lacrosse teams. All of a sudden I'm like out of nowhere. I'm like, damn, everybody plays lacrosse. Mm-hmm. What is happening here? Did, did see, I miss it? See, I did not know lacrosse was huge in your area. And I think I was a teenager when I found this out mm. until I, I, I remember seeing a, a, this was on ESPN. I remember seeing a, a lacrosse match mm-hmm. and it was with this school that I did not know at the time called Johns Hopkins. I was like, what the heck is Johns Hopkins? Uh-huh. It is huge at JHU. I was like, Baltimore? I had no idea. I was like, <laughs> okay, did I miss something? Because it's like, it's also a big deal because I used to also work for JHU. So that's mm-hmm. how I know it's such a big deal. And it's like, as an employee, it's like, oh, you get to come see the games. I'm like, I have no idea what the heck is going on on the field. Because <laughs> it's like, I didn't watch it. It's like, I didn't watch it growing up. And I'm like, I don't think there's, I think there is a lacrosse professional league. It's just, are the games mm-hmm. televised? on the level as everybody else probably oh, no. not i mean mm. i feel like i would be able to see like the college softball championships before i could see a lacrosse game you'd be right <laughs> like, you'd know. be 100 right mm-hmm. i was like i don't know i'm like girl look here I'm like look and rugby is a whole nother thing because mm-hmm. 
rugby is like the weirdest like they have no like and not a lot of padding no helmets and they have less concussions less, and yes, instances less, of cte right. and they're like how i'm like yeah y'all might want to actually do that research stephanie is not a researcher i am not a neurologist so i'm not going to do this research and why exactly the less padded sport has less concussions and less instances of cte so you're not going to try to act like you're uh that that you're a female um female mm-hmm. south african doctor mm-hmm. searching a concussion and try to pull pull out your uh will smith uh, acting abilities uh, yeah, the truth i'm like first of all <laughs> leave us alone second of all i want to know i could also do this correspondence of why are black british people doing american um positions i'm like so y'all ain't oh, had no problem gosh. with will smith or my boy who won a whole oscar for um king of scotland he's a whole american man <laughs> y'all can play the okay oh, that's not Forrest what we're doing Whitaker. we are not doing this okay the Oh, it's like I can't. I'm like, because I'm like, I hear y'all when y'all say it, but the person that y'all standing on was Samuel L. Jackson, who actually didn't want rappers acting either. That is correct. It was like, baby, I'm like, it's too easy to do this, and I'm like, I I get it to a certain extent, but it's also he must have changed his tune because I've seen him act with uh, exactly. a bunch of rappers lately. He changed it so quick because he realized that because one. Just how like on certain like certain roles they'll make it a white person or use somebody mm-hmm. who is completely miscast just right. to get butts in the seats doing that with um rappers and singers and reality stars the same way they're like oh right. we need them to come see this it's like oh girl what okay all right so I y'all for disclosure I asked Cole to come here to talk about Caitlin Clark v Angel Reese because I was like first of all. Y'all know me. I don't watch the shooty hoops. However, comma, I like seeing black women win. So I was like, I am intrigued. And I also was like, who the heck is Caitlin Clark? And why are y'all loving this lady so much? And then I saw the massage noir jump out of people so quickly. Some people, I was like, oh, yeah, I knew this goodness. was coming. Other people, I'm like, I had a feeling. Was seriously, what the world? And then there was the other thing. You know, I can't stand you any other time. But here you go making sense, Emmanuel Acho. Okay, but before we get to that, first thing on the docket, Mm -hmm. Odell Beckham Jr. is now a Raven. He has signed a one-year deal to come to Baltimore. 18 million, 15 million guaranteed. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, people came out the woodwork. Stephanie, you see this? You know what? Oh, so you know you're a Ravens fan. Okay. I was like, I'm a Ravens (laughs) fan, but I also, y'all know how I feel about Odell. And this is like yes, a big, I do too. splashy I do too. addition to Baltimore. And the thing about it is when I think about splashy additions, because I love my Ravens, but when it comes to our receiving core, we don't have big splashy players. Um, however, we have playmakers. Um, what y'all not going to do is act like our receiving core is not good. I There are days where I'm like, I miss Todd Heap so much. He was a good tight end. Claude Bolden was literally the gift that keep on giving because in my opinion in, in my opinion i think that's the last great wide receiver you had and was him i the thing about it is when it come he lined up with joe so easily where it was like mm. mm, that thing that he joe flacco just threw it's like it's ridiculous and every time like after anquan was gone if somebody um missed it i'm like if anquan was here he'd have caught that ball <laughs> and every time, yeah. i'm like Oh my God, Anquan would have caught that. Anquan would have caught that. Anquan would have caught that. <laughs> because the thing about it is, it's like you could look at precision and his accuracy. Some receivers help curve that percentage of course. because they can work with it. Yeah. Anquan is like, Anquan Bolden was like one of the best gets. I also kind of like Steve Smith, but I feel like. And it's like, I feel like he, he definitely had more fuel in the tank. I'm like, I'm not, don't even get me wrong, but it was just kind of like, I don't know. I like, I, I, Steve I, I like Steve Smith. I do. And I and I liked him for the Ravens. It's like, it was, it's like some reason he fit in in a way that I was like, I didn't see that you would work so well, but it still was kind of like, now hold on that glasses. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it seemed like, yeah, this is great, but it would just, it disappeared as fast as it, as it came. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, mm, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know about this. So Odell coming here to Baltimore, which 
when they were talking, because one, not seeing him at all last season was actually kind of weird for me. I was like, well, uh, weird for him too. <laughs> I was like, huh? And I was like, well, it can't just be because of the injury because other people come back. But it's like, I didn't realize that, you know, the Rams were like, yeah, you know, we're going to wait and see how this goes. I'm like, are we? <laughs> are we going to wait? <laughs> like what? So when he, I was like, wait, is he not? And then he's visiting teams and I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right. So him landing in Baltimore was just like, so y'all know I just need some pretty people because this is the other thing about the Ravens. Y'all, I'm a Ravens fan. Do we have the most attractive <laughs> men on our teams? No. <laughs> Do they? Are they playmakers? Yes. Attractive? <laughs> see, see, you, 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 you're playing into what I've always said, uh, <laughs> and I've said this about any any sport. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't, I don't care what sport it is. If you want to appeal to the opposite sex. You must have some attractive people on it to draw them. Sex appeal saying. matters in sports. Really I don't care does. if I don't care what it is. Sex appeal matters in sports. And we're it not just talk, and I'm just talking about talking about face, okay? Because Brandon Williams, and I'm, by the way, very com- big congrats to him because he joined the Chiefs and he got a ring. Um, the thing about it is, it's like I thought Brandon one Brandon was extremely cute and attractive, and also he could dance his butt off. I'm like, first of all, he big man that dances in the. First of all, y'all had Bernard Collar dropping it like, you know, he was working down at the bank. <laughs> and he was like, I don't know why y'all have a problem. I don't have a problem. These insecure mothers got a problem. Because I was like, did y'all throw him some singles? Do y'all need a money gun? Because <laughs> I have no problem. I, I, I can let y'all borrow mine. Because <laughs> it was like, it was like we don't have that. And there are people like, I don't think Bernard is attractive. I see Cole said sex appeal. He didn't say attractive. Right. It's I'm different, saying. but yeah, um, so Odell is sexy and attractive, so I'm very excited for this. Mm-hmm. I would be a little bit more excited though <clears throat> if y'all would fucking sign Lamar to a fucking contract. <laughs> what is happening <laughs> with Lamar Jackson is ridiculous I, to me. I am that glad that you ridiculous. actually see it exactly the way it's I see like, it. It's like get the fuck. There's like when is the last time? And this a starting QB makes it to literally aging out of his contract, makes it to free agency. How? How? Okay. No right. effing way that, and I and I like his pretty, I like his pretty ass. He's went to the Raiders. I still, I keep forgetting to ask my brother how he feels about Jimmy Garoppolo to the Raiders. But if Jimmy Garoppolo can be dropped and picked up by the Raiders, which on one hand, you're like, girl, what? The other thing is like, like oh okay all right I mean I don't know what y'all want. I guess it's like I feel like Jimmy does not line up with Raider Nation the fandom <laughs> it's like I feel like that's a mismatch but it may not be so it's like Jimmy Garoppolo getting a deal before Lamar Jackson I mean I think it's not as many years <laughs> years but mm. ha- Lamar Jackson is a franchise quarterback I don't give a damn what y'all say oh, and y'all is. literally like going oh I don't know and I'm like. How is he making it to free agency? Get the bleep that, out of here. And I think I think people people don't really know exactly how to frame what is going on with Lamar Jackson. I I mean, I saw this coming, seriously. Mm. I saw this coming since they broke off talks in September. Actually, I somewhat saw it coming uh mm. this time last year. Really? Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll put it to you this way. So, ultimately, the well, let me let me backtrack. So, Odell Beckham Jr. Congratulations to the Ravens. You did get a. You do have a good wide receiver, and mm-hmm. there isn't really a number two that will compete with him for time or touches or targets. Yeah. The only other person that could on the team is Mark Andrews. That's a tight end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. You have a weapon that you haven't really had, like you mentioned, since Steve Smith and then before him and Quan Bolin. So you have something of quality at wide receiver. The only issue, of course, with him is, well, how how healed are his ACLs are? Yeah. Since he tore one in 2020 and then tore the other 2021. You don't know, you know, you don't know how how healed he is from both of them, but we'll yeah. get a chance to see it now. But mm-hmm. yes. I, I do agree with you. I think this deal would have been more celebrated had it been that Lamar Jackson 
is committed to the future of the Baltimore Ravens organization. The problem, look over to the Northeast Ohio area, look over oh, to Cleveland, and you have D and and, J, and um, Jim Haslam, the mm-hmm. wonderful ownership team of the Cleveland Browns for signing mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson to a fully <laughs> guaranteed $230 million contract. Exactly, exactly. So we'll fast forward to now, and people were saying there's collusion. Well, yeah, there's collusion. Some were thinking it was race. I'm like, uh, no, it's not race that is that's colluding the teams from signing Lamar Jackson. That's stupid, considering that I can name Deshaun Watson, I can name uh Russell Wilson, and I can name Kyler Murray. Now, each of them have at least 165 million dollars guaranteed coming to them. At least that. So with Wilson, he has won a he's won a ring. He's gone to another, and hey, I mean, he married Sierra. That's the biggest ring he ever got in his life. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <Ooh. Hey>. uh <laughs> get it. I ain't said y'all. I, I agree. But <laughs> I tip my hey, cap hey, to him. I'm just saying. <laughs> I tip my cap to him, and I tip my cap to Sierra too. Because it looked like she came up from wanting to be with the uh, uh, Sprite Sipper. Anyway, um, <laughs> now with Deshaun, yeah, he he had the ability to actually pull MVPs, mm-hmm. but of course he wanted to whip out his joystick mm-hmm. with with women who claimed that they were massage therapists, and he just did that one too many times, and that got him into trouble. Sure. So. We have those in the books. They are starting quarterbacks in the NFL for three different teams. So you can't say it's race. So it's not race that is colluding. It is money. And I say to people, you're looking at the wrong color. It's not black. It's not white. It's green. <laughs> and the, the people, These yeah. NFL owners are too scared to want to sign this guy to a contract because, and I said this to another one of my uh, Baltimorean friends, uh, I love this guy. My man is E Digger. Uh, mm. He does a show called What's Up with E Digger, and mm. and I, and uh, he asked me. So what do we, what do you see in the future? I said, Well, I can see that the Ravens will franchise tag him, and I can see Lamar Jackson basically saying, "Now nah, I'm gonna sit out." I can see it. I can see that happening. And the reason why I can say I can see that happening is because when it was leaked out that the Ravens only wanted to sign him to a one hundred thirty three million dollar guarantee. To a two hundred million, two hundred ninety million dollar contract, I was like, he's going to turn that down ten times out of ten, because he's going to want a guarantee bigger than Deshaun Watson, and he's going to put in front of your face, he's got two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed. I've won the MVP, he did not. Mm-hmm. So that right there should mean I am deserving of more, and he's going to come to any bargaining table and say that. But unfortunately, and I hate to say this about your team, Stephanie, but you're dealing with a franchise. They will roll the Brinks truck mostly to defensive players, and they sort of look at they sort of look at quarterbacks as expendable, even with a talent like Lamar Jackson. And I hate saying that, but but you're seeing it. And then, oh, by the way, after that contract that was signed by Deshaun Watson in mid March of last year. Late March of last year, the owner of the Ravens, Steve Biscotti, said, <clears throat> quote, now, I think it's going to be really difficult to sign anybody and get any quarterback under under a contract with these terms that are being signed today. Close quote. Yeah. Now, your owner said that in last year's Dang. owner meetings. This is why he gets called Biscotti and not Biscotti. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so here's the thing. So the thing about it is I think it is about money. Yeah. It, it, it's, really all, it it's really, really all it's really all it, it is because the thing about it is when we when Joe Flacco got that big old contract, there was a lot of people going, You shouldn't have paid him because he's mm-hmm. not worth it. And then a lot see, of those people are on the team, <laughs> the organization I would I'll well, add. Right. And it was like the fans like, How dare y'all pay him? What y'all doing? And then you have the Deshaun Watson getting fully like Deshaun with everything that was going on with him, which is it is still all alleged. But mm-hmm. the thing about this is way too many people for it to be not true. However, it is still alleged, and that's where I'm going to sit it. 
smart woman. Yeah, I like to keep my money. I'm not Tasha. I know how to play this. Okay. Um, so the thing about it is, it was like you gave this man, and the thing about it is, the other part of that whole thing about Deshaun, it wasn't just that y'all gave him a bunch of money. He was coming from the Texans. Baby, right. please look at his record on the Texans. It was like it made no sense. But oh. Cleveland didn't have y'all have not had a good QB. And I'm gonna say this as a Ravens fan and also somebody who watches girl. Yeah, Baker was never, he's not the way. Oh, oh he's man. not the Mandalorian. He is not the way. Man, Baker was uh, so yeah. it was like Baker he's is a, Baker. He he, he, he can he he's can dance Baker. if he's encouraged by his his black teammates. But yeah, you know, dance. you know, you know, completions and records and you know, rules and wins, you know. No, that's not his that's not his it seems like that's not his ministry. So well, that's to the your, issue. Yeah. Well, to your point about Deshaun Watson, Stephanie. So the last full year he played, which was 2000, he threw for five, almost 5,000 yards, uh, threw for 26 touchdowns, threw for only seven interceptions, uh, played 16 games. So they only played 16 games then. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for a for an individual year, the quarterback statistics were stellar. But the Texans finished that year four and 12. Just saying. To, to to your point, right? Because and, and thank you for that. Because when we look at individual stats, it's like, yep. But, but it's like this: you're on the offensive side of the ball, darling. We need dubs, not L's. Mm-hmm. We need and, dubs, and, and they and teams do look at that. Like they will look like they 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 can only look at Lamar, and in 61 games he's played, he's won 45 of them. You cannot bypass that. You now, can. now they'll try to say, well, in the playoffs he's one in three. Okay, well, fine, but. How old is he? 25? He'll be 26 this year. Because he's got pl- plenty of time and he just plenty he, he, of time. And he will get into his prime, if not this year, next year. So you you will probably see him get better because with age. That's the thing. Because one, he, him and Joe Flacco are the opposite. Regular mm-hmm. season Joe's like, girl, what? Postseason oh, yeah. is just he like cared less seriously. Than the who the heck <laughs> God? Because it's kind of like yeah. You get Joe into the postseason, like we gonna get yeah. at least past the wild card round. Because yeah, literally right. that twenty thirteen Super Bowl was just like, yeah, like right. seriously, how the heck did y'all get here? You're right. Flacco could have less but regular season. Like regular <laughs> season, Joe was just like, girl, I don't like, know what we gonna get. Postseason like, is like, well, yeah, he was like, f you, give me January. Batting down the hatches because <laughs> guess what's gonna happen? Joe's like, I'm a whole new person. Because the thing about it is, it's like we can look at it like the status of black quarterbacks and how people really think that, you know, the court, the quarterback position is so um, intellectual. And you know how these black people are. I'm like, yeah, because mm-hmm. apparently you don't know no smart black people. Because let's be right. very clear, Arizona dragged, Bidwell dragged his feet on Kyla Murray, too. He did. It was like, it's like, oh, we like we're talking about production. I'm like, there's no way when all literally y'all dragging white QBs out of retirement or just literally not playing on the team to get hey, come in and you know That's get this. So we'll give you at least like seven million dollars to just sit on the bench. And you can't even talk about the cap. I'm like, what cap? The ceiling is the roof for y'all. Y'all not even knocking on the cap. This is not why he came here, y'all. Just ooh. I'm sorry, and I'm 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 going to try not to cry about this part because the person that I always talk about football with was my dad. Yeah, and it was like that was like the most favorite thing. So now when I see stuff about football, I'm like, God, I would love to get James's um his opinion because I think it's like he probably has his own opinion on Odell, just Odell, but the oh, yeah. lightning rod, lightning in a bottle that a big player like a Odell Beckham Jr. on the on Baltimore would be because one, he was also excited about Steve Smith because he's like, Steve's a really good player. He was right. Yeah, it was he, like, he, he was he just was. like, mm. right. So it's kind of like you go, so yes, and you know, success. I did not cry about this. Um, so this is my my fun part because one, he's a huge Ravens fan, and but mm-hmm. he's also a football fan, and he probably been like, yeah, oh no, I mean, he's been hurt, but yeah, because that's what he said about Steve Smith. He's like, he's a good player. I think mm-hmm. this is good for us. Because when you see stuff, he would just talk about it. But um, yeah, I the fact that old man Wade was like, You see this? I'm like, you dang on well, I saw this. 
y'all know I saw this. Y'all know how I feel about that light skinned man from Louisiana. Okay. He pretty. He got a beard. He got a sittable face. Y'all, I get it. Y'all know how I feel. <laughs> so I'm excited about this. I, I do I think he still got stuff in the tank? Absolutely. He does. He got and, it. And, and I think I think for Odell, this is uh, this is a good landing spot for him too. Well, mm -hmm. it would be better if Lamar Jackson was a quarterback, obviously, but it's a good landing spot in terms of he gets the opportunity to do mm -hmm. three things. One, he gets to prove that you know his his days are not numbered. Uh, mm -hmm. Two, I think two, he gets to be the number one wide receiver on the team, and three, he gets. Who won up here. the Cleveland Browns twice a year? The fact that they all of that cannot be all of that cannot be dismissed. It can, yeah. all of it not. It's like it's pretty much like yeah, I'm gonna come back to the AFC North. Mm -hmm. He didn't lie. <laughs> I'm sorry, he didn't say that, y'all. I'm just saying he was just like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. Oh, you meant Cleveland? Oh, girl, about. <laughs> <laughs> girl about that mm -hmm. but y'all um what i asked cole to come here to talk about was college hoops as i said i'm like this is not a thing for me i went to a pwi but also i was not a big sports school unless it was lacrosse or baseball mm -hmm. um this year of march madness um the women's tournament was literally the hot topic yes it was because caitlin clark I guess people, I don't know if they're trying to equate her to Sue Bird, which, girl, no. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I don't see no. it. I don't no, see no, it. no way. It's like, it. I'm like, I, I think, think of any of a like, very big white WNBA player, because yeah. you're not going to, they're not going to compare to like a Brittany the, Griner. It's like, oh, see, fuck you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, the, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, the only comparisons I could make from uh, with uh, Caitlin, Caitlin uh, Clark to Sue Bird is, they're white, they're brunette, and they wear ponytails. That's the only saying, comparison that's it. that you have. That's right. It's it. like if you want to the talk about like, who different. is she the re who is she the second coming of? Um, Caitlin Clark. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, so during this tournament, it seems like Caitlin had a lot to say. She liked to oh, trash talk. She had a lot to say and a lot to do too. She yes. had a lot to say. It's like she seems very to what the kids call badass. Okay. <laughs> she seems like very what like, oh, I can I, I, like the kids. The kids say that she badass, right? So she came into this. LSU came in as the underdog. Yes, they did. Um, and they had my girl, Angel Reese. Uh, and these and the thing about it is, I think, okay, Cole, remind me. Was Caitlin Clark the one who got punched in the face? Was Caitlin Clark the, was she was the one who got punched in the face? No. Okay, who because again, I wasn't watching the tournament. They were doing like the handoff and the high five, and somebody got sucker punched. And I'm like, wait, who the heck got sucker punched again? Doggone it. I would love to say I can recall it, but I can't remember now. Yeah, it's like it, it wasn't Caitlin. I'm like, but I feel like mm, no, she, has, she has a punchable face. I said what I said, and I ain't changed. No, no. She, she, she does from the standpoint of she talks that much trash. <laughs> she does. The other thing, it was like she talks a lot of trash. So. Towards the end of, I think they had what less than five minutes left in the game. Towards yeah. the end of the game, I, it may have been a two minute warning. Who knows? Again, I wasn't watching y'all. I'm being serious. Re Angel Reese decided to do what us um, Bravo watchers do: return serve of the shade. Because <laughs> Caitlin was not oh, shading I Angel directly, but she was I shading Angel. <laughs> <laughs> return serve of the shade that's beautiful thank you stephanie okay and you know what turn serve of the shade is the name of the of the show <laughs> so the thing about it is it's like they did a whole uh why am i blanking on the word that i want to use segment about caitlin clark and her clapbacks during the tournament it was cute and it was yeah. funny oh and it was co-signed and it was Cosine and her teammates who, and by the way, apparently um, Iowa is very, it's a very, very <clears throat> white squad. And then yes. the LSU team is a very, very black squad. It's not all and, black. And and so was the, so was the squad before they, they, they defeated South mm -hmm. Carolina mm -hmm. and, and, and along and to boot, 
not only did South Carolina ha- it was all black with the team, mm-hmm. it's a it has a black head coach, a mm. stud of a head coach. Oh, I'm in Dawn Staley. Yes. You better tell him. Oh, you better tell him. See, y'all, y'all need to listen. If y'all are about the sports, y'all need to listen to oh, sports because he got all that. Okay, that's one that y'all know, and that is not a sh- that. That is not a shame. That is a shameless plug because I have no shame plugging Cole's show. I'm just saying. Um, so Angel Reese decided to turn return serve of shade and do the John Cena, which mm-hmm. I was not a wrestling fan. I'm like, girl, whoops, you can't see me. I'm like, you're way okay. It feels like the Care Bears movie when they were up in the tree and say, close your eyes, maybe the lion won't see you. <laughs> your eyes mean that the lion can't see you. Oh no, you can't see me. I'm like, why are you doing that hand in front of your f- face? It's your eyes. What? What? Okay, never mind. I'm the not a is plan. hilarious. It's yes, like, it's stupid and hilarious. Yes, it's stupid, <laughs> funny, and she like because one angel pointed at her ring figure like, girl, we about to get a ring, and uh huh, that whole you can't see me. I'm like, I guess I can't. I can't see you at the winter circle either. Yeah, and angel said you, you can't. You can't see me, and you can't see this ring neither, Caitlin. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> um. <laughs> And apparently this uh the the you can't see me taunt and they're saying taunt, which is whole funny. Apparently it was originated by Tony Yayo. Yes. Yeah, a um a I'll be kind. Uh a, a junior member, although I know that I, when I say junior, I'm not necessarily mean he got on late. I just mean that in terms of importance. To the G the, clan. Yeah. 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 There's a couple <laughs> yes. of people like, I still ain't got no checks. And I'm like, girl, why would you go? Okay, never mind. Um <laughs> <laughs> how would you go over here? But he like, what, what are we doing? Um, so but yes, John said he got it from Tony Yale, yes. Yeah, which is very like still hilarious every time because it turned into the John Cena thing. And Tony Yale was like, What what's going on here? It's like everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you saw people come out of the woodwork to go, How dare you? Then all of a sudden. The trash talk that we made a segment about with Caitlin, and it was cute and funny, all of a sudden it turned into bullying. Angel Reese was stalking her. She was classless. Um, She was a fucking idiot, according to a man who used to work on ESPN. And for some reason is like, oh, I didn't watch the tournament, so I had no idea. And, you know, guys, I really don't follow um, basketball. I mean, again, he was on the, on the whole ESPN. He spent a little time um, yeah. hosting SportsCenter, which does yes. not focus on baseball. He was a baseball analyst, it seems. However, comma, SportsCenter does sports center, so not baseball center. It was not... And- Baseball and center, he, not home run center. Yeah. So and and he lied to the public because oh. because of what you just said. He lied to the public. It was like and, and, I mean, and you're talking about Keith Overman. He lied to the mm-hmm. public. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 nothing to apologize for because it was like now here's the thing, sir. <clears throat> Watch the tournament either, and I would never call that girl a fucking idiot. No. No. It was like, so first of all, I'm like, why is she an idiot? Dave yeah. um, Portnoy, a.k.a. Stool oh, Presidente, Lord, also came out of nowhere, MFL. called her classless. And I'm like, this MFL. coming from this man who literally is just like knocking on the door of age of consent on the women that he dates. He literally walks around Jersey stalking pizza places. And you also are the head of Barstool Sports, who has their own problem with white people using the N-word, including you. And you are talking about somebody else being classless. Girl, fuck you. Oh, hypocritical, right? <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, it's like, this is how y'all know that you know y'all don't fucked up when now all of a sudden it's like, see, this is what happens when y'all give any person leeway to like little be hypercritical of a black woman because literally y'all celebrated caitlin for like all of her clapbacks because y'all use that up girl okay Mm -hmm. and then when it's returned to her with one because what she is effing winning her team is winning because one everybody walked in like i was gonna win this so i don't know what else she was gonna do and then they win and now all of a sudden y'all like oh my god this class is let's talk about this no let's not that you're not going to sit here and celebrate one person because 
Y'all have literally labeled this, and I said it, a black sport because it's basketball. So any non-black person who is who achieves and plays well, you want to put them on some kind of pedestal because y'all made it a black sport. I'm like, so first of all, all sports are black sports. I said what the hell I said. Second of all, if y'all weren't so busy trying to leave non-white people out of sports, y'all would never have this problem. Y'all have been keep y'all have been gatekeeping sports so long. So then when you actually let talented people in, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's their sport now. I'm like, yeah, it probably would have been our sport. It would have been a mix, quite frankly, for all sports, if you had made it even and accessible to everyone. But y'all don't want to hear that. That's not yeah, I guess y'all don't want to have this conversation. So and I'm, it's like you saw it all over the place. People are like, man, it's classless and this, that, and the third. Um, it's not. Because I think people are like, well, I mean, I think I had posted this on my Instagram. Someone said, I mean, we wouldn't have this conversation. It was two black men doing this. I'm like, so time out. Yes, we would. Roll it back. <laughs> yes, the fuck we would. Yes, we would. <laughs> and we actually have had this, you know, the call back to what we're talking about, Odell and Jalen Ramsey. How many people talked about what the hell happened at that game and mm -hmm. how Odell should have rose up above it? He should have rose above Jalen's taunting. Y'all like walking back and forth on the sideline, apparently with bats and God knows what else. We do have these conversations with men, but for some odd reason, y'all are overly critical of black women because one, black people are black women are too masculine. Oh, <laughs> say not that women again. enough. Say that again. And it's just like, wait a minute. So y'all saying black women are so masculine. So y'all think trash talking is a masculine thing. It's a man thing. So why that's do y'all have a problem with this? Mm -hmm, that's exactly my problem with that. It's like, first of all, shut the hell up. One, that white girl had it coming and y'all ain't going to talk me down from that. So first of all, she talked too much. Girl, she wrote a check her ass couldn't cash. Them girls kicked y'all ass and they yeah. deserve that. That coach deserved that win. That team deserved that win. And Jalandria Biden, Dr. Biden, you can kiss my ass. What the fuck you invite what them girls she here? Thinking? And it's like, girl, when do y'all invite the losers of the tournament to some place? Do it another day. Hey, we are having Sunday brunch in June. Y'all want to come? Do that. Have a so, consolation brunch if that's what y'all want to do. I have no you. problem with that. But the fact of like, you don't realize how that looks. You do. That's What's his terrible. name? Um, Herm, look at the optics. What did the optics look like? Them little white girls at Iowa got their ass kicked by these black girls at LSU. And now you're like, oh, you can come too. No, the hell you can't. Sit no. down. Would you be yes. inviting LSU? Probably not. Y'all be they like, they were to be a runner up? No. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Y'all want to invite their asses. It's like, no, they can sit there and do what you do when the other people lose the tournament. Yeah. You send them a nice bouquet, send them an yeah. edible arrangement. I don't yeah. care what you do. Yeah, but say like, wonderful season, but don't invite them. Don't invite that. So the thing about it is, it's like Angel is basically being herself. And the thing about it is, is that thank you. Black yes. women have to code switch in a way that is so effing weird. Being tough on the court as a female athlete is like, oh no, you got to still be a lady. Shit. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's that death sentence right there is ridiculous. It's like, come on. It's like, so anybody who watches the sport, the people who watch it, they're like, the women play a lot harder. I'm like, they do. Because they have a lot yeah. more to prove. Yeah. And many of these, many of these good, especially black hoopers that are women, many of them, guess what? Guess how they learned to tell, they learned the sport. They learned it mostly from playing against men and playing mm -hmm. against boys. Mm -hmm. And and how and how do boys how are boys with the girls? They're like, okay, if you're gonna be serious about this, we're not going to spare anything on you. We're gonna treat you the same. We're not gonna we're not gonna baby you. We're going to treat you as if you are, are a guy. Mm -hmm. And and that is the ultimate sign of respect for any woman hooper, any girl hooper who wants to be a woman, because they mm -hmm. just want to they want to show that they can on equal footing play the same sport as guys can. So when they're involved in, in the action and they see how things roll, you hear a whole lot of trash talking being thrown. A whole lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, a whole lot. So what do you think what do you think a girl is gonna do when she wants to be engrossed in the atmosphere of basketball? She's gonna pick up one to talk trash. Right. So 
So excuse me if I'm Andrew Reese. Excuse me if I want to be one of the best hoopers in college basketball, which I am, because in 39 games of 2023, I averaged a double-double in 34 of those games. Oh, and did it every single tournament game, including the national championship game, where my team beat the more favored Iowa squad by 17. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm going to show you how I celebrate when I see when when I say scoreboard on somebody. Oh, and oh, and there's someone who talks trash like I do. Oh, this is even better. So I see that person and she gonna get that work. That is how Angel was thinking. Correct. And you know, and you know why I say to Angel, I will big you up <laughs> every single opportunity. You get the opportunity to say scoreboard on anybody, do mm-hmm. it. That's you. And it's not that you're hood. It's not that you're ghetto. And it darn sure is not that you're classless because you're none of those, dear. You're none of those. He is. <laughs> you none are of a those. baller. You He's a, a ball baller. player. I'm not. You I'm are. like, I'm not a woman. I'm a ball player. I have right. no problem with her saying that. And I'm like, one, it's like, even she said it. She's like, yeah, they, I've had to deal with, they say I'm too hood. And I'm too ghetto. I'm like, Mm -hmm. she don't have to change up nothing to play a fucking sport, especially when literally y'all let these best, these men who play basketball all of a sudden put out mixtapes about the hood and drugs and shooting. I'm like, girl, what the hell are you talking about? (laughs) It's like, sir, I don't think you still like, no, you ain't shooting nobody. Shut up. Like, shut up. Shut up. Be quiet. What are you talking about? You are not, you are not Jay-Z selling drugs before you started rapping you are not the notorious big shut up because i'm sorry i don't think you want them to knock on your door like so you said you're having doing the shooting is that what Mm -hmm. you're saying you're selling the drugs which drugs are you selling it better be knowledge it better be love of the of of the game it better not be nothing white and powdery because we're gonna have to talk to you what is wrong with y'all yeah and and, and, leave her alone go ahead yeah no i'm sorry no Um, and, and and and, let, and let's get to the sexist part of this too. Too. <laughs> so you have Keith Olbermann, who you mentioned earlier. He was one half of what was considered to be the highest ranking sports center tandem with Dan Patrick that it has ever been on the on the network. And and the, to your point, which was absolutely correct, ma'am, uh, they would focus on every single thing. Football, hockey, basketball, baseball, professional or amateur. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they covered women's college hoops, too. In fact, ESPN started to televise women's college hoops in the final four and the the, uh, NCAA women's tournament by the time Oberman was co-anchor of SportsCenter. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he says, well, I really don't follow it eh, you might not follow it as little as you did then now but you did follow it so you have an understanding and it hasn't changed much mm-hmm. i mean it's this it's the same thing only different players so you can't come to me and use that excuse of well i just don't watch the sport or i don't follow the sport the fact that you want to call any person an effing idiot is one thing the fact that you just in a capsule just in a just in a snapshot moment, you look at this woman, and yes, Angel Reese is all woman, and you want to call her an effing idiot, really. And then he had to he had to Michael Jackson moonwalk that crap all the way back, mm-hmm. got back on Twitter, and he apologized for being uninformed about the backstory. Right. So then he wanted to then he wanted to clarify things. Says you know what. I didn't have any idea about Caitlin Clark. They both were wrong. I'm so sorry, sir. I can't read. I'm like, nigga, shut up. Sir. It's like, uh, no. Neither one of not. them were wrong. <laughs> it's like, no. What do you, what do you, sir, what are you talking about? Absolutely sir, not. Neither Jeez. one of them were wrong. Why were they not wrong? They're playing a sport. <laughs> the whole sport and it was like oh i'm just now realizing like so this is why you should not literally make the mistake that a lot of people do on twitter they just speak out without knowing what the mm-hmm. hell they talking about like sir Ooh. you are in journalism you the, should know better and he's been in journalism for over three decades that's the 
you, you, you say this three and zero 30 years three decades you say this and then you see what he how he responds to stuff and it makes you question his journalistic integrity it's like come on man you got you know better than this but obviously you don't mm -hmm. and you then don't. i'm so and then i'm so glad you mentioned people popping off on twitter and just saying whatever saying and that right. makes me direct my gaze toward that idiot called dave portnoy mm. the one who the one who said well you know i uh, well let me do this i'm sorry <clears throat> i'm sorry let me let me get my let me get in my coast <laughs> force uh, back the one who oh my god 2010 said quote i don't condone rape but if you are a size six and you wear and you wear certain uh, jeans a certain way doesn't that mean you're asking for it close quote the man the man who not only likes to use the word n-i-g-g-e-r but made a show on the Barstool Sports Network titled Barstool, N-I-G-G-E-R, mm. and basically made it an acronym for now is getting extra now is gonna get extremely real. But he spelled out the word N-I-G-G-E-R in the title of the show. So this is the man that you're dealing with, the founder of Barstool Sports. Mm -hmm. He and, and 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 oh oh oh! By the way, I'm sorry. I forgot about this. And then when Colin Kaepernick knelt, mm -hmm. he saw him kneel, and this man had the nerve to say when he saw Colin Kaepernick that he was, he thought, quote, an ISIS member. Close quote. So just to give you a backdrop and background on Mr. Portnoy and his portfolio. Now you're dealing with this guy who decided to get on Twitter after he saw the national championship game between Iowa and LSU. And he said about Angel Reese on Twitter, quote, she's a classless piece of mm -hmm. close quote. Mm -hmm. It makes you want to slap the taste out of his mouth. It, it just, it just goes to show how you can say things like this. And here's this person saying, that what Angel did was classless and all I and everything I've seen about Angel from on the court to off the court and everything in between it shows nothing but class to me. But this guy is saying that she's classless, but all I keep seeing, and along with you just mentioned him uh touring pizza places with uh, Tucker Carlson, uh trying to humanize Tucker. And yeah, you can laugh at that because uh, I don't know if that's <laughs> possible. Uh yeah, that's not you. You're saying that this person is classless, yet you have said things about women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have said things about Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. You have you have basically <laughs> basically put forth a referendum toward black people and using the slur <laughs> as a title of a show on your network, mm -hmm. buddy. That basically says to me that you are the one who is classless. And I'm not saying it to insult you. I'm saying it because your body of work just tells you that. You're 46 years old, man. You're trying to basically say that a 20-year-old young woman, black woman, who, who I will say this as a man, that woman is fine. You're saying that she, who had 34 double-doubles in, in 39 games, which that is not easy to do, I may add, that this woman is classless when she was displaying the joy of winning a championship as an athlete would. Are you kidding me? That's what an athlete's supposed to do. And she sees that she sees that Kayla Clark, who was talking much trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she mentioned the one girl. I think it was Louisville. She mentioned a Louisville girl. Shut up. Shut up, girl. You down by 15. Mm -hmm. And then she definitely when, says, shut the F up. Yeah. Told her shut the and told another one shut the f up. Looked at another girl when they were playing the national semifinals against South Carolina with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the woman out in the uh, out on the three point line and Caitlin's about ten feet behind and she basically waves on as if as if to say you're not gonna take the shot. I'm not even gonna come up to guard you. So mm -hmm. you see your Aunt Reese, you're seeing that you're saying oh so she she's that type of player which that's cool, 
Mm-hmm. But but you should know. And Angel reads mine and she's thinking, when I get my chance and our team is up, <laughs> I'm going to hit it with that same tone she's been hitting other people back. Oh, and oh, by the way, John Cena basically said in the National, uh, in the Elite Eight uh, uh, to Caitlin Clark, Congratulations. I love that. I love that passion. And I love you doing the you can't see me taunt. Mm. He said that to her. So you got Angel Reese seeing all this, hearing all this, drinking in all this. What do you think she's going to do? And mm-hmm. so you mean to tell me you want all these women? No, no, no. Let me let me let me respect the platform here because this is what this is what I have to say. Mm-hmm. So you mean to tell me you want black people, you want black women mm. to act as though they're performing a T. Okay. okay. <laughs> they're, they're, they're supposed to, they're supposed to have high T. They're supposed to not curse. They're supposed to, they're supposed to be in their Sunday best. They're supposed to con, con, comport themselves in a feminine manner the whole while. So, so you mean to tell me that Y'all this is what we're that a housewife? So I don't know why the hell they wanted it for this. So, 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 so you mean to tell me this is what you want athletics to be? Is is that right? Yes. When a when a white it athlete is losing, that. you need to be above board. Um, and Cole, you have known me for a little while, and I've always said this on the show. When it comes to black athletes. White fans love black athleticism. They don't like black like athletes. Black athletes. Because athletes are people. Athleticism is a skill. And unfortunately, you, you witness that with Angel Reese. You do. Again. Again. It's yeah. like, girl, get out of my face. Get out of my face. Because the thing about it is, this is what happens when a white, because one, if if she had did that and LSU had lost, Y'all actually would be clowning Angel Reese for doing that. You would clown her if Iowa somehow upset them and won. You wouldn't be like, oh my God, let's have a discussion. You're only doing that because LSU won. If they had lost, y'all would be joking. I'm going to say, see, this is why you can't do it. Because y'all be saying that her ass wrote a check that she couldn't cash. She couldn't cash. But it's like because she won. Because it's like the thing about it is like when black people are in these sports that y'all have deemed um part of the majority and you know a higher above board they better just be so happy that you let them in as if they ain't bust their ass to get there please stop acting like you just let them play you ain't let them do nothing we let you in this league no you didn't they earned it anybody who's a professional athlete of color most notably black please believe they busted their ass you ain't let them do anything you let these white players in. Because like, oh no, it's like, I don't know. It's like, do they have talent? Absolutely. But if they are like verbose or if they are cocky in any way, you expect that from them. And also, y'all don't ever say to white athletes, how dare you embarrass us? We let you in here. You'll be hard pressed to find a white athlete who is told, we let you play. You'll always find a black athlete who's probably heard that either in JV varsity or in a professional sport they've heard someone at least say we i can't believe you're acting on this we let you here we let you play and y'all better be step and fetch it and be so happy that we let y'all in here yeah you should be privileged for the honor right How did, like we let you play let me your your <laughs> your program is trash without me please try that again it's like i can't um so cole before we get out of here because i'm gonna wrap this up so let me just say this. Um, y'all, I get it. Caitlyn Jenner is, and I get why people are trying to dismiss Caitlyn being, being a whole trash box about her ideals. And the thing they'll say, well, it's because Caitlyn was born a man. Let me just be very clear. Y'all act like y'all never met a piece of shit white woman. Let's be very clear. Caitlyn Jenner is acting like a piece of shit white woman. She's exactly identifying as the gender she needs to be. So her going after Dylan, joining in with Kid Rock of all people about beer and how dare they 
is very weird. So Dylan Mulvaney, who I don't really know, um, but hear that she has her own problems, that she's a little bit problematic as well, because she's also a white trans woman. Some of them are problematic. Some of them are not, by the way. But that's well, with everybody. <laughs> well, I mean, with, with Caitlyn Jenner, I mean, basically, uh, she is the female version of what Bruce Jenner was. Because what Bruce Jenner was was the same thing. He espoused the same things that she espouses now. What I found fu- what I find funny was when she became a woman, she was wondering, well, wait a minute. Um <laughs> yeah, I'm you know, I I'm now I'm now more liberal. You can see this is me. But no, partner. It's like you still subscribe to the same stuff you did when you were the guy. And the thing about it, the problem is, is that I think people thought that when Caitlyn decided to identify the gender that she is the most comfortable with, they thought that would just change her ideals. It didn't. However, it didn't comma, I'm like, thing. folks need to understand there are there are cisgendered white women who think the exact same way she does. She mm-hmm. wasn't, they weren't born men, they were born women and they feel the exact same way that she does. She mm-hmm. did not change. So when mm-hmm. those trans activists were boycotting her when Caitlyn's show was on, you do not speak for me, Caitlyn. Why do you think they said, stop propping her ass up? Because when the ESPYs gave you an award, everybody's like, what the fuck are you giving her an award for? And what did you do? You got your pretty ass up there and you accepted your award. Now you got Dylan Mulvaney, who seemingly is a problematic person. So first, um, Caitlyn's issue is her getting her Nike endorsement. Um, the Kid Rock's one is about her getting, um, uh, I think, Budweiser. So it, this is a very interesting thing about the whole Nike thing. I'm like, she equated it to sports people and she used Allison. And I'm like, so first of fucking all, Stop weaponizing this black woman that you did not care about three months ago. You can actually be quiet. One, that is not the same thing because one, you are not going to compare Dylan to an athlete. You can compare her to maybe like, oh, I don't know, a Gigi Hadid, Ariana Grande, a Cardi B, an entertainer or a content creator who has a sponsorship with an athletic division. Mm -hmm. That is what you can, you don't compare her to an athlete because there's a lot of models and at, and actresses and singers who have Nike endorsements, Adidas, hello Beyonce. You have Puma. You have Reebok with Cardi and Ariana and Gigi Hadid. It's like you did not need to compare her to Allison Felix, who is a actual gold medalist, and Nike played in her fucking face. That is not the same thing. And again, you're waging this war against athletes in this weird way shut the hell up caitlin you don't speak for trans women and you don't speak for nobody how about you shut up ma'am go and live your life you did not want anybody questioning why the espies was honoring you and here you go stepping on trans athletes you had a problem with uh high schoolers and trans athletes like and y'all are just hurting these girl teams like it's funny Y'all only come after the trans women. Y'all don't come after the trans men. How interesting that you don't have a problem. Like, because one, when, and they're just saying trans athlete, but it's seemingly y'all are only talking about um, trans women and say how unfair it is. Um, And it's like, really? Because one, because you're still thinking in your misogynistic brain that men are better at, at sports. And that is a goddamn lie. Yeah, it's not that men are better. It's just that men are different. Right. It's like it's not better. It's just different. And you're acting like um, I think her first name is Simania. Mm-hmm. And because she literally was so much better than her white counterparts, they said so Castor Semenya must have been born a man because she man. was so much better. And no, she is a she's a whole she's a cisgendered woman woman but you had these white tears they weaponize it against caster and it's like why are you doing it so then they make her start to talk hormones and guess what she actually got slower so what are you talking about if we're talking about female hormones actually slows you down what would make a trans woman athlete better on just on paper not based on their skill not based at their level just literally 
It's a trans woman. She's going to be better. Why? When I'm, dis- when I'm disliking is I think you're starting to see trans women mess things up for the real women. And it's going to become more and more of a problem until women, real women step up and say, look, you still have, you're still thinking on a man's brain. You need to step aside because you're not a woman. You're not. I'm sorry. Just the way you're thinking, you're not. You need to step aside. Wait, or wait, who's wait? Who's wait? Who's thinking? <laughs> no, I'm saying trans women. Not all. Some like a Caitlyn Jenner, and it's like uh, yeah, because Caitlyn only like speaks for her, right? Yeah, and and there's a few. There's a few like her thinking like a man, taking that mentality of a man and forming it in a woman. I'm thinking, um, nah. You 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 bog you bogart in the space where women should rule it, and, and it's and, and, and it's mostly because no place in it. Um, all misogynists do not identify as men. I actually exactly because like, like the thing about it is exactly. like yeah, all misogynists do not identify as men. And the thing about mm-hmm. it is before just like saying like oh they're just better. I'm like what are you talking about? But also then you got to go show your work. Please mm-hmm. show us a sport not in someone like like if you're talking about running or anything like that dumb sports by several seconds we're talking about complete domination because that is what y'all are selling that does not happen and also it's actually kind of weird because y'all don't do this with trans men because again in your misogynistic brain there's they they are quote-unquote women which by the way i'm not going to keep doing this with y'all i'm not going to keep doing this with y'all it's like this is so very odd to me it's like why do you care this? But this is about control. You don't like, oh, this is unfair. You don't give a damn about these athletes. You don't care about them. You literally just want to put your, literally put your foot on the heads of trans athletes. Mind you, you still want to be celebrated by actually I, being able to have the privilege of not having to struggle financially with becoming the gender that you want to identify as. Mm-hmm. Kate, and when I said it, when she transitioned, I said, Caitlyn Jenner don't give a fuck about trans people. She care about Caitlyn Jenner. And you had all of those activists that were with her, those quote unquote, um, the woke, and I'm putting quote unquote woke because one, now you got people like Caitlyn who want to use that as some sort of um, negative thing and some kind of slur. I'm like, but those woke activists that was with you on that RV, Caitlyn. I'm pretty sure they don't fuck with you right now. And I'm pretty sure they don't. Literally, they got a whole bunch of shit by being in your stratosphere. No, they don't it's like it. it's like in one, you also use black trans women. I don't like that shit either, because that's oh, the problem. Man. Y'all will get y'all will try to leapfrog over black trans women. I think that's kind of what happened with Dylan, because you'll weaponize your whiteness. Before you're, it's like the thing about mm. it is you're white first and then you're a woman second. No matter if you're a born woman and that's just who you identify as. When it comes to, that's why they say white feminism, because y'all will be white before anything else. That's right. It's like, we're not going to do this with you. And then y'all will leapfrog over black trans women, but then expect them to be there to pick y'all up and strengthen y'all. I'm like, I'm sorry. We would not have a pride month without black and brown trans women. Stop acting like we would. It's like, y'all need to shut the hell up and literally give credence, give the flowers where they are due. Stop acting like, one, y'all can just whitewash everything. Caitlin, shut up. It's like, and one, stop giving her credence. Caitlin don't speak for no trans woman. She speaks for her goddamn self. Caitlin speaks for Caitlin Jenner. And she's a piece of shit and she's always been a piece of shit. It's like, ma'am, her actually going into the gender that she wants to identify as is literally high key, the highest level of problematic white woman. She has always been a problematic white woman, period. And I have looked at her. I've I've looked at her the exact same way the whole while, ever ever since I knew of him. (laughs) And I I mean, I mean, this ever since I knew of him, I I always thought, "Mm, I just not feeling it. Right. It's like, I don't have, I'm like, that's the thing. Caitlyn Jenner's an asshole. Asshole is, is not gender specific. Yeah. I'm about to say, uh, yeah, that is not. It's like, specific. she's always been a asshole. I ain't got to misgender her for do nothing. I'm so, like, yeah. yes, Madison, I got to misgender nobody. Right. You're so, an asshole. Yeah. Period. So, so if we were expecting her to be kinder and gentler. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, y'all would have had another thing coming because I didn't expect it. It's like y'all like, expect, and it's like the thing about it is, even on that show, and that show is old. 
when those activists on the bus were talking to her about like, yeah, why are you bigging up Trump? She wasn't changing her ideals. Hello? Oh. Look at the no. white women who, I'm like, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm like, I get it. I get y'all. I'm like, oh, because you spent, so what is all, I'm sorry, what's M- Marjorie Tyler Greene's issue then? Because oh, I boy. believe that she was born a woman. So it can't just be like she used to be a man. I'm like, uh uh-uh. It's like, nope, this is like, oh, baby, please no. She is at the ultimate boss level of white woman. Because not only is she being extremely problematic, she got the platform to do it. That woman has no clue. It's like, get the hell out of here. I'm like, you got like ultimate boss levels of problematic white women and Caitlyn is in that. Dylan Mulvaney, um, apparently she's probably, I don't know who she is and I kind of don't care. Kid Rock, y'all actually getting mad that again, Coors Light is a beer company. This is not about athletes. I'm like, what? like so trans people don't drink beer now? It's beer. Like, are you being, are y'all being serious right now? It's like, it's been trans people are human beings. It's like, I mean, how, this it's like, it's trans it. people. like we are, com- <laughs> these are human beings. Like, Everybody drinks. And it's like, how dare y'all prop up trans people to sell beer? First of all, it's Bud Light. I could say a whole lot, but I'm not gonna because I used to be an RA. And, so I and can't the company get past can the promote their, And the company can promote their product however they see fit. It's like, it's literally like, why does this like them selling beer and Kid Rock? I'm like, remember we as black people used to think that Kid Rock was just cool and he could come to the cookout and then he literally shown that he was a white man from the South Oh, oh remember. or the Midwest. Well, he, well, he, well, he came he, from the Midwest. Now he lives in the South. But yeah, but uh, but yeah, I mean, he he was the guy that he, he embraced hip hop and mm-hmm. and and he 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 was the he was the godson of one of Run Sons. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, he was he was supposed to be all good in the hood. Mm-hmm. And then you saw him wearing uh, waving the uh, stars and bars and knowing that he's extremely hard line conservative. Blue line. And, and all about the police and then the tune changed didn't it changed mm-hmm. money fast it's like i'm sorry yeah. what makes y'all think that i feel like you know when it comes to you make we make the joke about welcome to the cookout right and it's mm-hmm. like yeah we have to be a little bit more um selective we have to be a little <laughs> bit more selective of that but because but the thing about it is it's like black people as a whole we've always been very inclusive why because we know how it feels to be excluded like yeah we don't like being excluded so it's like oh no if you are cool and you keep the energy cool you can come on in until you stop and then it's like you know what here's your plate to go your green your greens um will your cornbread is soaked in green juice get the hell out which is the ultimate level of disrespect if somebody makes you a plate i just want to let y'all know if you're like wait my green juice is soaked in my cornbread because nobody don't fucking like your ass blanche get out you lucky you getting a plate to go. It's like I, it's like every time came over, I'm like, because y'all give her a platform. Y'all give her a platform, a platform where y'all literally see her as still a man too. So that's why you get it. But y'all also give Marjorie Tyler Green credence to literally talk without no explanation. It's like what? It's, it's like. Why let this woman talk? Why? Stephanie, Stephanie, take a breath. Because <laughs> it shouldn't be any person in Congress mm-hmm. being expelled by literally peacefully protesting. I believe it's a First Amendment right to be able to protest being told that they need to get out of Congress if they're doing it with the kids who are like, I'm tired of getting shot in school. I'm mad that I actually have a gun safety drill in school. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm going to march with you. And then three people in Congress, two black men and one white woman, that one woman mysteriously didn't get removed by those white people. Because again, whiteness above everything else. Yeah. They don't like her ass either because she's a woman. However, she's a white woman. They're like, yeah, we can tolerate you. So they'll tolerate her. <laughs> but those two black men is like, tolerate. how dare you? Like, excuse me, we're supposed to be like one one band, one sound. I'm like, yeah, the sound is off. Y'all are flat and sharp at the exact same time. Guess what? These are my fucking constituents. 
These are children. Children should not be doing any of this conversation. Children should not be walking out of school going, y'all don't care about us. So guess what? Fuck this education. I don't care. And y'all are moving people in Tennessee. It's like, it's. It, I want to say it's Tennessee, but. I did have a school shooting here last month, so. And they just reported, we are recording on April 10th. There was a mm-hmm. mass shooting in Louisville today. Yeah. I am just flabbergasted by this. I was talking about this about my mother. When you think about like drills in school, right? Mm-hmm. In school, we had to fire drill. Um, And like when she was going to school, it's kind of like you had a bomb drill. Mm-hmm. Um, if certain depending on where you live in like in the country you could have an earthquake drill because if you're in places where earthquakes of course you got to do a drill hurricane drill you have that now right. there are kids who are having school shooting drills yeah i've heard that and it's like they're like what is this i'm like yeah but also yeah. as an employee i'm someone who works a corporate position there's also a active shooter training that many companies have you take annually realize because of mass shootings that is not just changing children that's changing in like adults as an adult i can be like you know what yes i'm an adult i need to know about active shooters children should not it's like why should children need to know how to literally handle what happens when a mass shooter enters your school children should not need to know that as, a, as an adult it's like okay i'll i'll, I'll eat that this mm-hmm. one, I think the active shooter trainings, no T, are extremely over dramatized. It's like, this is theater, okay? It's like, girl, y'all doing a lot. However, it still is important because you look at it like, this actually has happened to people. And that's why it seems so over dramatized because it actually is based on real life. Theater is no, a violent, yeah. It's like, it's like, I remember like we used to have like midnight showings of films. Mm-hmm. And I remember like the last one was like, it was a Batman movie and all us. And I remember telling my mother, I'm going to go see the movie. And all they did a thing about a mass shooting when she called me like, yeah, I saw that and said mass shooting, Batman movie, midnight showing. And then she was like, I saw the state and it went, Phew. but it's like, it, they hadn't said the state yet, Stephanie. So I was like, my daughter was in a midnight showing of Batman. Yeah. The dark night. So it was kind of like, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, let's just take away mass shooting. Let's take away midnight showings. Midnight showings. Mm-hmm. Which were literally super lit. Midnight showing of Lord of the Rings, Return of the King was super lit. Okay. Just want to let y'all know. We had a we had a ball. It's three hour movie. We don't care. We had fun. Can you imagine Avengers, Avengers Endgame as a midnight showing? Oh wow! <laughs> it would have been so been spectacular. Fun. Okay, that would that would have been fun to watch then. See, yeah. see, so it's kind of like you go. Oh. Can't. It's like I, these are children. Children should not. Also, if we are talking about Congress, they are civil servants. They work for the constituents. They did the work of their constituents. They work for us taxpayers and voters. They did exactly what we said to do. You stand up for fucking us. And y'all are showing like, oh no, y'all can't. Uh-uh, one band, one sound. The band is off. Mm. And now it's kind of like, y'all are showing y'all ass. I'm like, yeah, y'all are showing like, see, I don't want to be um, hyperbolic and say, see, now I feel like y'all going to go back to making us count jelly beans and jars. See, what had happened was mm-hmm. It's, it, it, that you mentioned what politicians are supposed to do. That they basically are public servants, right? That's mm-hmm. that's really what every politician, including the president of the United States, is supposed to be, right? Mm-hmm. A public servant. They're supposed to do the will of the people. We hear this in every campaign. We hear this every campaign season. We hear this even in stump speeches when they aren't campaigning. Mm -hmm. But you see these examples time and again on the news and you read it of these politicians thumbing it in our noses and faces saying, well, 
I'm here. Now I got the power. I'm wielding it. And yeah, I know I said that I am representing you and I'm the servant of the people. But no, you all are peons and I'm on the throne. And mm-hmm. you see so many of these politicians act like that. Yep. And I can I can understand how that would turn people off of the whole political process altogether. Because you're seeing that in these political campaigns, we're all being sold a lie and we're watching the lie unfold. In real time. In real time, either in either in city halls, in state capitals, or on Washington. You, you see it. And, <laughs> and 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 it makes you just say just blow the whole process up and start over. It just, it, it's getting to that point now. Cause it's, it, I, I've said this now it is, it's it, politics is so ridiculous, especially the national politics. It's so ridiculous. It's now as if we are now reduced to being cheerleaders, mm. you know, it's, it's like, you know, we, you know, if, you know, if you're Republican, you rep the red, if you're Democrat, you rep the blue and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's it's all it's all of a sudden we're doing these cheers for both parties that with many of the members of these parties they don't care about the people who they serve <laughs> and yeah, it's not sucks. about that it, it's yes like, it's like they don't they don't care it's like there's some people who really don't care they just want to be in congress the problem yeah. is those who actually do care and want to make a difference, they either they get pushed back or overshot. They get pushed out or overshadowed. Because the thing about is, I'm pretty sure these two people, like that from Tennessee, these uh, politicians, and I'm going to look up their whole names because I want to say Jeff Johnson, and it has not the, that's not correct. So I'm like, one, Stephanie, get yourself together. Um, so one is Representative Justin Jones. One, a lot of people probably had never heard of before. They'd never heard of him. One, it's in Tennessee, but that's the other thing. Um, so Brother Jones, who I enjoy, um, the white woman who did not get um, removed from Congress, but they had a vote from was Representative Gloria Johnson. And let me find a third person, because girl, what is happening? right now because now there's a hashtag called hashtag the tennessee three yeah yeah the other um person is justin pearson mm-hmm. yeah. so representative justin pearson so justin pearson who literally i li- i'm sorry he's very pretty sorry i love this one <laughs> um let me shut up <laughs> but again Having your hair out and he is wearing his hair in his national state seems like such a political statement where it's like, girl, this just how my hat. It's like, it what? It's like, girl, what is happening? So Justin jo- Justin Jones, Justin Pearson, and Gloria Johnson. Those are the Tennessee three. Mm-hmm. So I just... What we're seeing is literally not what it's supposed to be in this country. Whereas like, you can't say what you really want unless you can say what you want as long as white people don't have a problem with it. It's like, wait a minute. Right I'm like, wait, hold up. It's like, right hold up, hold up. Like, you can't be saying that. It's like, yes, the hell I can. Because one, yeah. y'all let Marjorie Tyler Green cook for a lot. Y'all let a, Got that woman. Tucker Carlson Look, there's a lot of people that y'all lit cook and say, well, freedom of speech. I'm like, unless you're a black man who literally is going, I'm going to stand up for my constituents because this is what they actually want. And the case of Tucker Carlson, I guess you could be white and say anything because here he is espousing all things Republican. And they pulled tweets earlier this year saying I couldn't stand Trump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. It's like, girl, and it's like I'm not. Get, I can't. Uh, you I, know, it's fu- it's funny. It goes back to a a joke that Chris Rock says, and it absolutely is correct. I mean, when it comes to politics, it is all right when it's all white. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, in- we, we don't give too much to Christopher <laughs> around here. 
but yeah, I, but I also grew up on Chris Rock. And so the, like the turn of events is actually kind of sad when I think about it. But yeah, yes. it's kind of like as long as it does not ruffle white feathers, some people let that shit fly. If it doesn't ruffle um, male feathers, they'll let that shit fly. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine. Shit on female athletes, it's fine. Talk down mm. to trans easily. It's fine. Because, you know, it ain't hurting my feelings if you do it. It's like, mm. yeah, grow the hell up. Trans women are women. I'm not going to keep doing this with folks. It's like, if you're saying like, oh, what makes a woman giving birth? There's a lot of women who are born women who cannot have children. Are they less women because they cannot give birth? No. Of you'll course move the not. It's like, that's the thing. It's like, Trans women are women. That's on period. I'm like, I'm not like, we're not going to walk this back. It's like, because then if you're like, if you're equating a woman to a baby factory, I'm like, there's a lot that we need to discuss. Because there's also, we could talk about the black maternal mortality rate because y'all don't care about black women. Because for a very long time in medical books, y'all literally said black women were genetically disposed to have a higher tolerance to pain. And y'all taught that to doctors. That's something. Yeah. That taught other doctors that I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? Or if a black woman is, or a black person in, in general, is in the hospital complaining about pain, they're being dramatic. It's like, uh, yeah, and y'all not are not managing their like the pain scale. Anybody mm-hmm. who worked in because it's zero to yeah. ten, and zero they say 10. like rate your te- rate your pain. There are mm-hmm. actual clinicians who are like say that black people are being over dramatic. Which, like, so please ask again why there are some black people who do not go to hospitals or doctors. I'm like, yeah, because you probably won't give a shit about them or tell them that they're being overdramatic or just literally just going, um, oh, just do this. You'll be fine. I'm like, no, or not doing follow up second opinion things or sending them other places. Well, you remember, uh, well, you remember back in 2020 when uh, we all were encouraged to take vaccines for uh, for the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were many black people who didn't want to do it. And one of the things they cited was the Tuskegee experiment. So Which right there, that tells as, you. Yeah, so it is. But it just goes to show you the mistrust of the medical system with many black people goes runs that deep and goes that far. Yeah, Especially because the Tuskegee is, experiment wasn't because people were given vaccines. They stopped giving it to them. Right. And literally, if these people die because mm-hmm. they lost the funding, it was like, like, do you have a Tuskegee experiment? Explain it. What happened? They weren't giving them the treatment. That was the experiment. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, it's like, that's the thing. They would experiment on black people and just like, let's see how this works. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. We got, we, we lost our funding. You didn't tell these people, though. Right. And then they just died. It's like, because you don't treat black people like they were people again. You like the, like, cocky, like, and not even cocky, just like trash talk, being verbose on the court. That's mm-hmm. fine, as long that 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 swag is fine as long as there ain't no black person in it. Then it's like you got to think about what it was. You got to like talk it. You got to take it back because every time I think about the whole Angel versus Caitlyn thing, you know what I think about Cole, and you'll rep- you'll appreciate this. I'm Brady. Thomas would lose a game. Where the hell was he? He'd pick up his goddamn helmet and walk in the goddamn in the locker room. He wouldn't even go out would for this hands, yeah. and shake hands. He wouldn't even show up. And people were like, oh, it's well, because he's such a big competitor. Yeah. Let yeah. a black quarterback do that oh. and you would say they disrespectful and classless. And how oh, dare man. you? Oh, he could oh yeah, and he can yeah, he can tear up Windows tablets on the on the sidelines. Throw it on the ground and break shit. I'm like, huh? And I and all, y'all not and all, charging him. And all yeah, and all he would get is like at worst. And, and I mean he broke about four or five of them before he got the slap on the wrist from uh, from up all from up high saying, Now you know, Tom, you should not destroy NFL property. Now you know you gotta take care of it. Now you put that in the hands of a black person, he destroys one of them, the fine comes like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I can't even but i I just can't because every time i'm like yeah because excuse me uh what's his name cam newton who i'm like girl what um literally did one kind of celebration and he had a whole 
um, opinion piece written about that. Oh, okay. And that was in Nashville. I remember that. It was like. So, yeah, this was this was the dab craze. And the, the, to this day, I find this funny. So uh, so he scores a second touchdown in that particular game in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And and, he, you know, he did the dab and he did a little dance uh, before and after. Mm-hmm. And one of the Titans players took offense to it. And the Panthers and, Tit- and Titans players got into a shoving match. Mm. A woman was who was near it on the stand saw that and was and, and took I can't believe I'm about to say this took to the tennis in and wrote a piece saying this is not how you should have a football player represent the NFL it's mm-hmm. ridiculous you shouldn't have a guy do that I'm like uh, excuse me ma'am uh mm-hmm. the guy scored a touchdown um there used to be a time in the NFL where yeah, if they did if, if they were to do anything demonstrative, you would get a penalty. They did away with that. So guess what they could do now? If they score a touchdown, they can demonstrate the joy of scoring a touchdown. Mm-hmm. That's all Cam Newton was doing. Right. I found that hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> you all, you you all found offense with that, really? Oh, I thought you would find a fan like like if he hit somebody or if or if he was being mean to a fan, which Cam never has been. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> you ever. found a fence with him, yeah, never. I mean, in fact, it's the opposite. After he would do the dab, he would try. He would pick up the ball. He'd try to find. He'd try to find a a a a a, 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 a kid fan that would be wearing a, a Panthers jersey. Mm-hmm. And he hand the ball to him. Correct. So. It, and he would have done it then, but of course the extracurricular activities expelled all that. But, mm-hmm. but I, was, I, 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 I saw that article. I'm like, oh my gosh, you just simply do not get it. Yeah. Saying saying stupid things like, you know, this, this is, you know, this will put a stain on 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 the on the youth. What would they think when they see his? This is not this is not behavior of a role model. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. A violent yes, sport is. as football. I'm like, you do realize they are not out there playing cups. Right. It's like, this is football. It's like, literally, I still, it is like, it is, every time I think about it, it's so graphic, but literally, J.J. Watt with his very bloody nose. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, girl, it's like, first of all, there's some people who are squeamish, like they see blood and they're going to faint. But also, when anytime he literally is critical of anything when he sat in his presser and said y'all need to come to work it's like uh i was like oh my god that's badass let a black pay- player said that who the hell you think you are okay uh a person who's not looking at my fucking record going girl what is this but also it was more not really pinpointing anybody it was mostly just kind of like hey, y'all can we you know I want to win too. Like, what? You know what? Nope. Y'all, I could talk to Cole about the sporty sports, the shooty hoops. Got Gabe Kapler as well. He's just pretty damn super tatted up. And I feel like I would enjoy um, him cooking me a meal. I will say (laughs) the um, other part of the day that we would be doing because I'm like, so first of all, I want him to cook me a steak. Okay. I can can cook. Okay, so Gay Kaplow or Devonte Swain? Yeah, I don't know if Devonte could cook, but <laughs> I'm just gonna be asking him to. Okay, so you know what? Anyway, y'all, we are gonna go ahead and get out of here. We are overtime. Like I literally said, like, okay, I'm like, I'm like, I like talking to Cole. Y'all think I keep people prisoner? I do not. No, I don't. Mm-mm. I and just you didn't like, hear. right. I'm like, I just enjoy the space to have conversations. I just do. Hello, we swim in nuance because it's for me, it's never just you no, know, no pun intended, black and white. There's a lot of gray going on, and we have to like sometimes it's a darker gray or a lighter gray, but it's gray. Now, 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 speaking of uh, shameless plugging, let Ooh. me let me do this with you. Ooh. I love the fact that you represent black, 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 black. Love it, love it. But the reason why I love it so much and the reason why I love the Mocha Men's podcast is simply because 
you shine the light on the fact that yes, we're black, and yes, there's a there's a perspective to be had about black, but it's not just one lane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blackness is extremely broad, it's extremely expanse, and we are all not a monolith. And that that's what I've always appreciated about you. I appreciate that. I yeah. I try because I wish I could just say it's just one thing. It's like it's really not. Mm -hmm. Because it's not, because when I think that's the other thing, because there's so much under the umbrella of blackness. And I'm yeah. kind of like, when it comes to us, I'm tired of seeing the punching down. I know. I, I'm with you on that. It's like, I, I can't that. do the punching down. I'm like, nope, I'm not punching down on um, queer folks. I'm not punching down on disabled folks. I'm not punching. At least, I, I'm sorry. Let me say that. I'm going to strive to not do that. Yeah. Same. That's, that's I'm the strive. Not do that that too. is the goal. It's like, I don't, the thing about it is, it's like, and also I've seen, I don't know if you've seen like the updates where they're talking about like the cases of anti-Semitism going on in the country and why they're like, why are there black people who would stand up for it? Because there's actually black people over there because of like the biggest disservice when it talks about like anti-Semitism in this country and the Holocaust is that we're forgetting that black people died in the Holocaust too. Being Jewish is a That's religion. Correct. If That's you correct. talk to any Holocaust, um, historians they will tell you no 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 black people died in the holocaust too yes because they're black jews mm. correct it's like it's not like being jewish is not a white thing because there's a lot no. of like modern day black people who are jewish right now mm -hmm. so it's like why do you do that because there's black people over there why do you fight for lgbtq plus because there's black people over there that's why i don't need yeah. any other explanation i'm like why and also yeah. i'm not just one thing there's not a black person that's just i'm just black nope find one you will not find not one person who does not have a multi-hyphenate identity in our community we are multi-hyphenates every goddamn day well start with our heritage we're multi-hyphenated right there that part <laughs> it's like baby please understand we are stronger together hence why there's always a divide we got to divide y'all up. It's like, yeah, because why do you think all of a sudden, reasonably, um, Jewish people, Italian people, um, Polish people, Irish people all of a sudden became white? Let's be very clear. In this country, historically, you were only seen as white if you were born in this country. So if you came off a boat, you were not white. All of a no. sudden, they're like, wait, hold on. These people no. who are a little bit darker than us, they're getting strength in numbers. Yes, come on over here. And let me just say this. When it comes to a lot of things, I make this joke about hiring movers when I, the last time I moved. I'm like, I can't go back, girl. I can't be packed. I cannot be lifting no stuff, taking stuff upstairs. Hell to the no. I will not go back. <laughs> it's like, I can't. I'm like, uh-uh, nope. I can't go a level back. So when your safety is not as... um valued or important it's like it's kind of like you're like i got a little bit more safety because i'm considered white i'm like okay i can't go back to not being considered white do i understand anybody doing something on the helm of being safe absolutely people were like passing for white i'm like please no anything that any black person did in this country please know it's because of safety hmm. black people used to disappear they used to like after emmett till they used to put little kids in oil drums while they were alive and throw them in rivers and lakes and streams for fun. We were fun. Killing black people was fun. So anything yeah. that black person did for safety yeah. in this country, please know. White yeah. passing, pressing your hair, please know it's because of safety. Oh. I, safety. Look, I, I was born in New Orleans. That is the, that is the home of the brown paper bag test. Honey. <laughs> like, why y'all up? Like, because it's out of safety. And do you, and when we talk about voting, a lot of people are like, you do realize um, when they talk about voting, why black people don't vote, it's like, um, why did I just blank on the word that I wanted to use? Voter suppression. Yeah. Voter suppression, voting apathy. People like, I don't understand it. Please know that's born out of voter suppression. You suppress somebody a little bit too long. They're like, well, I guess it really don't mean anything. And then it's Jason Whitlock, but I'm not going to go further. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Lord, Lord. Uh, 
Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Cole. I can't. That's a whole him and Marcellus Wiley. Because, you know, the rumor is his wife may be joining one of the Bravo shows. I'm like, nope. Mm -mm, get him out of oh. here. Oh. So they were oh, like, what's interesting? I'm like, so not only is he anti-black piece of shit, he also is a transphobic piece of shit. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure, like, I know y'all, a lot of white Bravo player like, watchers don't care about the anti-black, but y'all probably care about the anti-trans. So hopefully... Either. I'm like, if she's on there, that's probably fine. We'll need to see his ass. Please don't bring his ass on here. I forgot that Marcel Swally got married. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, uh, oh, no. It's like, I totally forgot he got married. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, no, he's problematic. Get him the hell off. And the bad part about it is, by association, they're going to say that she's problematic. Now, like, oh, that's not fair. I'm like, but we do that for a lot of people. Yes, yes. About proximity, and for and unfortunately, and, and I love us. We do, <laughs> we do, we do that the fastest. I'm sorry, yeah, we do. Like, <laughs> girl, who you hang out with? Because I definitely do it with folks who hang out with um the Charlemagne, the not deity. Um, oh Lord, no! So it's like by proximity, and the bad part mm -hmm. about it is, you think about the black woman that's in his um orbit, and like some of these women are pretty bad. Yes, it's kind of like. Damn it. Oh, see how that work. I see. Mm, so uh, yeah, mm. Mm -hmm. I I want to like Charlemagne the the non deity, yeah. the it's demigod. For, it's hard. It, it's it's hard. I'm not saying I hate him. It's just hard for me to like the guy. I don't know it's where like, he stands. It's kind of like you go. The, the bad part about it is, it's like there's some people that I've relegated to being a broken clock. Broken clocks are right two times a day. I'm like, oh, okay. You know what? I get, you know, that's this why. is your time to be right. And, you know, there's that's, there's a lot of people who have a laundry list of those people. That's that's why. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's like, okay. mm, and at any given time, I'm like, girl, I don't agree with them. But then there's that one time. It's like, <laughs> kind of like in my UI show when it comes to Angel Reese. I'm like, you get on my nerves. But when you're right, you're right. I mean, I, I mean, you know what? A win's a win. <laughs> mm-hmm. A win's a win, and you're winning when it comes to Angel Race. Oh, mm. as always, this has been a absolute pleasure. Yeah, yeah, the pleasure was all mine. I'm it's so all, glad it's, that you came here. I'm I'm so glad that you still, uh, after all these years, <laughs> invite me onto your show. I'm thinking you'd be sick and tired of me being a guest, but uh, no. obviously you aren't, and I'm so happy that you don't. I'm, I'm so not. I'm, I'm so not. <laughs> Cole, please plug. Tell everybody where they can find you. And cool sports and all the other shows you do. <laughs> oh gosh, that's another reason why I love being on the show and listening mm -hmm. to how you do my tag. Uh, <laughs> uh, I try well, to do I, justice. I don't know how well I am though. Well, you, you come pretty close. Uh, you, you can find me. I, I do interviews uh, on Revelations. I put it on a hiatus for other reasons, but it's gonna. I'm gonna bring it back. I'll dust it off and. Yeah do that and you can find that on revelations tv show that was just a at revelations tv show on youtube youtube.com for slash the ad dollar the at sign revelations tv show uh you can find the new show that i have with a, a guy that you know uh uh why is it jefe uh we do a show that's targeted toward men's mental health and men's mm -hmm. health and men and men's and, and men's um uh, I guess you could say uh, issues uh, called mm -hmm. mentality, and it is not the it is not the the regular men are great and women suck. No, we we we're the type of guys that if we see guys who do that to women, we bash them. Mm. <laughs> we big up the women. Uh, that is how that's how wise and I roll. You can find that on uh, my new uh, uh, new YouTube st uh, station <laughs> YouTube channel. That's a youtube.com forward slash at sign Comey, C O M I Media Incorporated or C O M I Media INC. Mm. Uh, you can, of course, uh, find uh, the, let me start to think. You, all, you can find me doing uh, Return to View, which is a, a true crime podcast that I put on hiatus, but that's going to return. And you can find that on uh, anywhere you can find US, uh, USA Today Network uh, material. And where uh, Stephanie filed me in the first place. 
you can find me <laughs> every Wednesday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. I always do it live. Mm -hmm. where I do a show on uh, youtube.com forward slash at sign sports with a Z. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all, thank you so much for listening. This has been the Mocha Man's Podcast. I will be back next week and it'll be a and I will have a guest that I'm like very excited for her to come back because um let me tell you something. Don't tell don't at me and say we need to talk about this on the show. It's I'm always gonna go, don't threaten. Don't threaten you with a good time. <laughs> Girl, you can say nothing about a word. <laughs> so uh next next episode, I'll be joined by my girl, Miss <laughs> Sanity Thief, Miss Ace Noir, oh, my girl no. Asa. She's coming had back Asa through. for me. I definitely would because I'm like let me tell you something after this live reunion that they're going to have for Love is Blind y'all playing in my damn face you know what look here um, yeah anybody who was um, who's on Love is Blind do not, at, do not DM me do not DM me okay unless you want to have a conversation you want to come on the podcast then, then definitely DM me because we can talk if you want to talk but we ain't talking about nothing about um, LIB until after the reunion because I can only imagine what the heck is about to happen at 8 p.m. Eastern on Friday, April 14th. Yep. But y'all, I will be back next week. See you, Coco. Somebody named Jack want to be called Jill. You can't do that. Meanwhile, half your favorite entertainers been performing under a fake name. You ain't had no problems with that. I ain't finna call you Jill. Meanwhile, you, you think you think you think Ice Cube is his real name? <laughs> really? Or maybe he just gave you a name he wanted to be called? Maybe. Just maybe. Hulk Hogan's real name is Terry. Let that sink in while you refuse to call a trans person what they want to be called. You sweaty ass Hulkamania, Hulk's fucking Hollywood Hogan is a n- from Tampa named Terry. <laughs> <laughs>